the difference between PMC and working for national, you know, your military, Army, Air Force, you know, Marines, Navy, whatever it may be. Where is my pride to work for you versus the pride to stay, keep serving the traditional Marines, Army, Navy, sure. Air Force, whatever it may be? Um, is when, it? when the debate um, was happening over, the, over whether the U.S. should go to an all-volunteer force, mm -hmm. It was in Congress in the early 70s. And Wes Moreland, who was the, the idiot general that really screwed up in Vietnam, who then they made the chief of staff <laughs> of the armed forces, screw up. Under who? Under Johnson and then, um, makes sense. And then Nixon. Yep. Um, he said, um, I do not want to lead an army of mercenaries. That's what Wes Moreland, career army officer, called an all-volunteer force. Because the men and women were finally going to get paid a fair wage. And uh, Milton Friedman was debating him in, in Congress, and he said, um, well, sir, then, uh, then I am served by a mercenary butcher, accountant, and barber. Because if you're not getting paid a wage that you're due, a fair wage, then you're not a free man, you're a slave. So uh, look, the, the big military can complain about, well, obviously they were, about um, uh, fair pay, but a contractor is, in our case, was an American veteran that already served their country once, volunteered to, and mm -hmm. now they're just volunteering to go back again and do it, you know, for uh, for pay. Of course, they're not doing it for free. Um, and, and this idea that our contractors were paid vastly more is also really inaccurate because our guys were only paid for every day they're in the hot zone, much like just like a, a roughneck gets paid to go to a rig. They get paid a lot. The day they come ashore, their pay goes to zero. So our guys were paid to be in the hot zone to do the dangerous thing. And as soon as they left, they went to zero. I saw, I saw somewhere $600 a day, if I'm not mistaken. That's a yeah. number I saw on the hot zone. Yep. Sometimes yeah. more. Sometimes right. more. Okay. So but, but, but again, the military is tax-free in a combat zone. Totally get it. All yeah. kinds of other housing allowances and, and other stuff, which is non-cash uh, compensation that right. they don't really f see and feel. But in our case, it was... Simple cash on a, on a barrel head. So when you, if I'm, if I'm uh, working for Blackwater, I'm a contractor there. You pay me six hundred dollars, and six hundred dollars is not five days a week; it's seven days a week. So I'm making forty two. And, and and it could be eighteen hours a day, or it could be twenty two hours a day, right? I mean, it depends. If the op tempos sure. go, you turn two. But your day is six hundred two hours or twenty four hours at six hundred dollars. Yes, but you're but you're still in a war zone, and you're still at risk of being shot. Sure. I mean, we had some of our our guys were. Wounded while asleep in their beds at night. We have a extremely inspiring story. There's a, a West Point grad, Army officer, Army Ranger named Derek Wright. Um, and he was uh, about 2006, asleep in his pod in the, um, next to the embassy. And a 107 rocket launched by Iranian surrogates came through, blew up uh, in his pod. And the guys found him in a pool of brain fluid laying on the floor. And they stabilized him, kept him alive, but they figured he was brain dead. They flew him to, um, to Landstuhl, Germany, where the military hospital was. And I remember meeting his parents and his wife because they came through our office because we had to quick get him a, a passport, basically to go say goodbye, to unplug their loved one. So I remember sitting there praying with them and crying with them, and off they go. And uh, so they got there like five days after the incident, and uh, Cindy walks in, and there's been no brain activity, and she takes her husband's hand and said, babe, I'm here, and he squeezes her hand. Mm. And, uh, and it started a long road back, and she made videos, and she documented it beautifully, and I tear up every time because he learned to walk again, and then he learned to run, and literally that rocket took the back third of his head off. And... Um, one of his eyes doesn't work well, but um, God bless him. He is as resilient as you could imagine. He's alive, and he is a tour guide in the state capital of Get Texas. Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. What yep. a story. Wow. Wow. So, yes, people can, pay, can, people can you know, throw stones at uh, contractors getting paid. That was a guy that served his country as a ranger, and he goes back serving again, and he you know, takes one to the head while he's in bed. Yeah, I, I, to me, I, I don't have a problem with the, uh, with the contractors getting paid. I'm trying to make it as efficient as possible to see what do we get better usage 
of our money with, paying it to our soldiers that are putting their lives on the line, or overpaying for product by a thousand percent that you can get somebody else negotiate so you can save some money for the company. Look, we have a we have an antitrust problem all across America. We've way over consolidated every industry. It used to have a hundred major defense contractors, you're really at five now. That's right. And they really pre- behave like a cartel. And they pay um, almost a brigade's worth of lobbyists, a couple thousand that infect Washington, D.C. Contractor gets charges way too much for product, who then pays lobbyists to pay politicians to affect more restrictions on competitors and, uh, and, and really more nonsense. And so it's a very unhealthy cycle. The next president must break up the cartel that is defense contractors, IT, big tech, insurance, banking. There's a, there's a really powerful book I read, um, actually referred by my daughter. It's great when your kids start referring you stuff and educating you. It's called The Myth of Capitalism. I highly encourage your, your audience to read it. And it's by Jake Tepper. And it, it basically makes the case that the problem in America with income, oh, I've read it. With income yeah. inequality. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Tepper. This is, this is not new. This, came, this is a. Uh, That's three or four years, years old. old. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I read this book. And it just, we have way over consolidated everything. And man, we saw that loud and clear in the defense space as well. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.